Hello, my name is Bora Pavicevic and I'm a producer of uh, Bora Bor. Tonight uh, we are talking to the man responsible for most of the stuff you see on television. That's uh, my friend and uh, owner of this TV station, Luke Sal. Luke, welcome finally to my program. Well, so. I've, I was in your program many times because yeah. you have uh, yeah. used my uh, material a lot. Eh? Yes, the lately. Today we are going to see uh, some material uh, from Bulgaria that you, that you shot. What did you do in Bulgaria? Well, I, I went there about two years ago in uh, order to have a project uh, about um, first Rome people. There's a lot of uh, what we call Zigeuner, eh? uh, mm. Rome. Roms. And uh, there was a professor, Professor Balici, and he had some material, so he invited us to come there. Mm. We've been there. We actually gave a camera to some people there in order to get uh, material from that country. And I think after two months they sold it because they were hungry or something like that. <laughs> yeah, is it so? Yeah, this, this was not yeah. wrong people, but that was mm. the general situation in uh, Bulgaria is very, very much, uh, we would call it corrupt. You have mm -hmm. to pay for everything. Mm -hmm. And the people are very poor, and especially since you know the, the economy hasn't started. So, but what, what did you see there from, from what, 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 what you would be able to see from this uh, pure country, like how, how that reflects in everyday life, like what do you see? Well, for, for me, it was the first time to go to an Eastern Bloc country, you know, after the wind, as, as they say. Uh, I went there because I've, I've been to Romania a little bit and I've been to, to uh, Hungary a little bit and, and East Berlin and places like that, but never for like two weeks driving around. And I was amazed. I was totally amazed. Uh, Bulgaria used to be a very industrial nation. Mm -hmm. They had lots of big plants in the East Bloc, uh, even in the, the Balkan East Bloc. It was the country where they had the, the largest factory, mm -hmm. uh, you know, big reactors, big mm -hmm. plants. We came there and it was like you would see an electric plant totally. F there was nobody there, but there was still power. Mm -hmm. on the system, like the, 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 the strong voltage things, and we went there and I thought, I, I'm going to shoot some... From the long time ago. So. Yes, like for eight years, and, and it was just leaking away. So somewhere in the grid, as they say, there was still produced mm -hmm. power, and it was going nowhere. So I made a picture, and suddenly I see flames from... And I realized it was like 280k volt or whatever. Mm -hmm. But desolation. What, I mean, what do you think, like, I mean, that's uh, Hungary, Serbia... I mean, that's the Europe. Why do you think like uh, all this is happening? Like well, in, in the middle of because they went, of course, from one economic system to another. Mm -hmm. And the, the funny thing is that if you look at a country like Bulgaria, where I think 95% of the people have their own own house, when the changeover came, the government, in maybe some wise decision, said, uh, "Can we please give everybody their house?" So if you lived in a house, you got it because it was part of the kolkhoz or whatever, some Soviet system. So everybody basically owns their own house. Now, if all the people would believe that their houses were worth like three or four hundred thousand guilders like in Holland, mm. everybody would be incredibly rich and it would be an incredibly rich nation because then the, the, the money would be spread evenly. Mm. So I came there and realized it's all in the mind. If these people would believe that their houses are worth three hundred thousand uh, guilders, mm -hmm. you know, comparable or a few hundred thousand dollars, they would go to the bank, they, they would buy cars, invest in other houses, so but who, since who, it, it didn't happen, it looks like shit. So who is making the money there? Well, a few, a few people. And when I was there, I was, and, and as you, you see in this country, the minorities are suppressed. So the wrong people are suppressed. Yeah, the Zigeuner people. Uh, it's really horrible to see how the the ruling class, and it's the same as happened in all the Balkan yeah. countries. There's one ethnic Party, group, yeah. and they claim the rights. Mm -hmm. And um, now these are. Uh, Christian people in Bulgaria and that they suppress the Islam, they uh, suppress the Roman In people. Bulgaria, isn't it that they're more like Orthodox orientated than, than Christian? Yeah, well, I, I call it, they are actually Bulgarian Orthodox from this. Because I'm asking this about uh, who is making the money, because uh, when you enter from um, Austria, Aust Austria going to Serbia, you have to cross Bulgaria. Yeah. Like you see, uh, you see all kind of Dutch uh, advertisement uh, along the, the, the Autobahn, like all the Dutch, Dutch films. So. Obviously, uh, who's making the money? I don't think anyone is making. involved there. In how? I mean, no, no, no. The Shell put some uh, benzene stations mm -hmm. there, some gas stations. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Uh, actually, I think that if we believe that c countries like Bulgaria, which is now on the second list for the for the uh, European Union, is really not, <coughs> but also Czechia and so, mm -hmm. I don't think it's a very wise idea to bring those countries mm -hmm. into the European mm -hmm. uh, Union. What they should do is make a new Balkan. Mm -hmm. economic union and then support these people and give them money and whatever mm -hmm. but since 
we, we are seen as suckers. I think that they see Europe as their salvation, as their way mm, that's out right. of economic yes. chaos. But that's because they uh, they didn't have a chance to learn uh, what you had a chance to learn, like uh, yes, one, so one you demo- build democratic up. tradition. Yeah, like, so democratic so tradition. So slowly but I was, so. I was disappointed. Uh, the, the people are nice and uh, they don't see how rich they are. As I say, they don't know a house is 30, 40, 40,000 guilders mm-hmm. and there's no business in the houses. Mm-hmm. But for instance, the taste there, and there's a little danger because of it was so close to Chernobyl, but, mm-hmm. but the tomatoes taste like tomatoes in Bulgaria. Yeah, in Serbia as well. Yes, but yeah. there's a difference, you know. It's like smell Everything, the clothes, they, the wool feels like wool. It's mm-hmm. the, There is still a great deal of taste, of natural feeling. Mm-hmm. In your flowers, in, uh, just, yeah, sorry. Uh, in your um, uh, political, um, um, how you can I call it, leader for for television, like um, uh, you based your entire um, platform on um, war in Kosovo or something like that. So how how what what's your opinion about? I thought it was it was a, it was a shame. It was a crime. It was uh, instigated by America, and because mm-hmm. oh, it, that's it worked, they say it's okay. It's the same as we have in Amsterdam, where the police commissioner. He gambled, he gambled literally mm-hmm. with 10 million mm-hmm. from uh, from 100 million that he had in cash. He gambled with 10 million. If a guy goes out in the street and gambles with 10 million, with 10%, mm-hmm. th- they put him in jail. But this guy, because he made money, mm-hmm. it's like 7 million, mm-hmm. he gets away with it. So now, the same is, I think, in Kosovo. It's the Western world, you do something you shouldn't do. If it they wanted out, to create like war in order to make money or something. Yeah, but why make war there and not make war in Israel, not make war mm-hmm. in, in Kashmir mm-hmm. uh, when there was big uh, trouble in, in Africa? Because they Kosovo do doesn't have any, any strategic... Uh, strategic uh, so we bombed the shit out of them? The same like it, it happened in 91 with, uh, with the recognition of, uh, of Croatia. Like, uh, yeah. Mene van der Broek was the, one of the first to recognize Croatia. So what, what do you think about that? Things, things go... I wouldn't say go bad, but I think it was a bad war. I said politically so. I can't believe that the Serbs for generations to come will not remember this, will not say, hey, we were bombed by NATO. Now, what do you want? To, that they receive a tourist, that they do good trade, that they don't cheat us? Mm-hmm. If, if you make war on a nation on these grounds, it was, according to the old doctrine of, uh, what do you say, nat- nationalistic, uh, sovereignty yes mm-hmm. that a nation had a right to do in itself what it does yes and here suddenly they say yeah but you know these cause of people that's different yes they could have done any every uh, everything against it and mm-hmm. they did by way of economic blockade but bombing outright war against i think was there was no mandate for it from the united mm-hmm. nations it was only nato and i still think it was a stupid thing we will mm-hmm. pay for it dearly because now we not only have to 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 help this nation, these people. It will cost more more to rebuild it than to yes. just start. Yes, and then people say that's good business because now everybody mm-hmm. makes money. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, some people will make money, and I don't think the normal Serb people, and not even the Kosovo people, are better off. Mm-hmm. It's 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 a shame. No, Serbia is totally. I mean, uh, Serbia is totally totally systematically destroyed. The economy is destroyed. Like, yeah, but uh, so is Kosovo. Yeah. So in Kosovo, I mean, uh, you don't know. You you never been there, but Kosovo is a very fertile land. Like so, what's what's yeah. there to, to be so. Anyhow, like tell me, like uh, when I have a chance to talk to you, uh, um, how did you start and why did you start learning it? I started because I was making television since '95, and uh, then I started because I was fighting this takeover by UPC, or A2000 UPC mm-hmm. of the cable networks. I said, let's have a, a referendum, let's stop this. This, this is, is the most ago. stupid thing. And, and now everybody says, yeah, look, you were right. We should never have given away this infrastructure to business, but they're still doing it. And it's the VVD and the pay van der most notably, who gave it away. I mean, it was stupid, the price was too low. Turns out later, mm-hmm. we didn't know at that time. Mm-hmm. But we have given away any influence over what comes on television. So I said, I'll, I'll prove to you that I was wrong, but therefore I make you right because I proved that I can overcome mm-hmm. this thing. Mm-hmm. Because what I was proposing in those days is that we, we, were, we would not have parents, uh, old, old people television or, or Allochtone TV or what we now call Kleurnet mm-hmm. or experiments. There were never much experiments, that I was true. But so I fought my way inch by inch by Mister, by going to Salta to get this slot. And now people saying, even in the parole, the, the, the hoofdredacteur, who by the name of Han Lips, uh, he and his wife, 
seemingly only watch uh, Big Brother by lack mm. of uh, intellectual mm. uh, uh, stimulation. They watch Clear Net, which they couldn't find this yet, and then really ridiculous comments like 10 minutes interview with some stupid guy from an, uh, uh, a Deelraad. Mm -hmm. It was a three minute interview. He didn't even see it, I think. So I think that the media are really ignoring us. For weeks, we send um, emails to, uh, on their request emails and not faxes, to a parole. They, they saw it once, but they never, they never printed what Mm. Clearly, that was was mm. printing. So first thing today was that they did, did it again. I think it's a shame. It's it's people don't see the message is we need pluriform media, which means yep. we meet a lot of people with different messages. Your mm. message from the uh, Balkan, Balkan, your yes, sir, sorry, uh, which involves Bulgaria. All the, the Croatians they complain about being called Balkans, Serbs complain about this. Okay, so well, it's very difficult. That's so anyhow, so for that South, region, Southeast uh, Europe, whatever. Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia. Call it Southeast so, so. Europe. But anyway, there are many people from those regions in Holland, the Greek people mm. also, uh, they should have some way on television. The meaning of expressing their ideas. Uh, yes, so, their so, music, so. their mm -hmm. culture. Um, so it's like uh, clarinet is about um, all the ethnical group b bringing uh, into pers perspective yes. their well, views. Well, some people say clarinet is what Salter should have been. Yeah, it resembles a little bit of that idea. Because it's the same idea to mm. give a space to uh, all these people. And Salter just did a very bad job and they did it because mm. the chairman of the Salter committee, Mr. Van Ginkel, was in fact an old uh, uh, executive of the of Het Parool and PCM and owner of AT5. Mm -hmm. So how can you put someone in charge of Salto, trying to make Salto, A1 and A2 as we call it today, a good program, if he's in fact only protecting AD5. Mm -hmm. And so the only interest of Mr. Van Ginkel, and I stated very specifically, was clearly to protect AD5 and make Salto as stupid as it was. So what we are doing is, is do, doing what with the millions and millions that have been spent on Salto, should have been done for the past few years is make Salto a good platform. Mm. If they make Salto better now, there is no place for Clunet. Mm. Because there's enough money, like a million per year for Salto, it just takes a little bit of organization. And as I say, this Mr. Van Ginkel has really, really done a very bad job on Salto. Mm -hmm. Yes? Amsterdam's politic, uh, Europe's politic, Serbian politic, uh, Macedonian politic, Kosovo, any politic, just the same. So, uh, this was my interview with Luxala, and now we are going to see some, uh, most of the interviews he did in Bulgaria. That's it.